Now, before the judgments can begin, there's going to be a 30 minute, about a 30 minute silence in heaven. Think about this. The flashes of lightning, the rumblings, the peals of thunder that the Bible says come from the throne of God are going to cease. The four living creatures, think about this, that for a billion years have been singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the one that was and is and is to come. They go silent for 30 minutes. The 24 elders that were declaring the worthiness of the Lamb of God, that were singing praises to the Lord are going to go silent. All the heavenly hosts are going to stop singing. The tribulation saints will seize their praise and there is going to be an eerie silence, silence, complete silence that breaks out in heaven as everyone waits in anticipation of what is coming next because the seventh seal is now broken and we know that the judgments are going to get even greater. What will the people be thinking? Will people be given time to repent? Is God going to destroy the earth? Something's on the horizon. Something very important is about to happen and all of heaven for 30 minutes remain silent on what is about to happen. Happen. Think about that. 30 minutes of silence in anticipation of what's coming next. Now, who knows? Who knows? This is chapter 8, verse 1, Timothy. Who knows what the Lord's going to do next? Only God knows. Now, we know, but, we, but John doesn't know, and the angels don't know. The seraphim don't know. No one's been revealed, but now we're going to see God begin to move and all of a sudden the trumpets are going to begin to blare. But understand, this is a lesson for us to learn tonight, that just because God is silent doesn't mean God is out of control. Doesn't mean God is confused. Doesn't mean God isn't moving. How many times do we think that when heaven is silent or when God seems silent, we think that God, you're not working on my behalf. And some of you are in this chat tonight and you've been feeling like the Lord has been silent. But I wanna tell someone that in God's silence, his plan is still unfolding. That the silence is all part of heaven's divine plan for the end times. God's silence in your life, write this down, is all part of God's divine plan for you. He's not far off. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody. He's not far off like you might think. He's not distant like you might think. He's not forgotten about you. Friend, understand that the teacher is always quiet during the test. And for some of you, the only reason why God is quiet is because you're in the middle of the greatest test you've ever been through. All the studying, all the preparation is for the test that you're going through. And the teacher's quiet because of the test. But I want to tell you that our God will not remain silent forever. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me tonight. That our God is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not a silent God. He's not detached. When the prophets would say, Lord, where are you in the midst of all this? He told the prophet, I'm about to do something in your day. Look at the nations and be amazed. And I want to prophesy over you that the voice of the Lord is speaking to you. That God is breaking his silence tonight in Jesus' name. And even though it feels like heaven is silent, even though you've been praying for your addicted child, even though you've been praying for your addicted nephew or relative, and you say, Lord, why haven't you delivered them? Lord, why haven't you saved them? Lord, why haven't you broke them out of the shackles or the chains? Why are you silent? I want you to know, just like in Daniel chapter 10, when Daniel was praying, the angel of the Lord showed up and said, Daniel, as you've been praying, I've been working on your behalf, that even though you don't see me working, even though you don't see me moving, God is saying to you tonight that I am working in the silence. It's all part of my plan and that I'm going to move on your behalf. Do not take God's silence as God's indifference because although heaven's quiet for 30 minutes, something powerful is about to heaven happen because chapter eight, verse two says, and I saw the seven angels. So now we have seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. So remember, the tribulation period carries many names as we talked about, the time of Jacob's trouble, the 70th, 70, 70th week of Daniel, the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the prophet Zephaniah gives it seven different names, and it's significant to notice the last one is the day of trumpet and the day of alarm in Zephaniah 1.14. So he gives the day of tribulation seven names, the last name of the seven names is the day of trumpet and day alarm. Now, Revelation 8.2, we have seven angels who are now given from God seven trumpets and these are going to declare and blow the seven trumpets and the judgments of God are going to begin to get released and guys I know the seven seals were catastrophic on the earth these are going to be incredibly worse than the last seven seals and the bowls being poured out are going to be even worse than those 
Now, out of all the angels in heaven, only seven angels constantly stand in the presence of God. Now, there's much speculation on who these angels are. I actually had a list of names from the Santugent, all these type of things. And then I decided I'm not going to give them to you because we don't know. We just know there's seven angels. So again, I don't want to try to assume. I don't want to go take from other historical texts and say, this is who their names are. We know there's seven angels. We don't know if they're archangels. Many people believe they are archangels. But remember, the Bible only describes one archangel in scripture. So we don't want to jump to your conclusions. Someday, we're going to know who these seven angels are. For now, just know that these are seven angels with seven trumpets who are going to make announcements of great significance, and they're each going to be handed a trumpet to get ready to blow the trumpets. They're going to receive special honor from God because they're allowed to stand before the Lord, and they're giving a, given a unique responsibility to blow the trumpets. Remember that angels fulfill the destiny and the purposes of God. That's the goal of angels. Hebrews chapter one, the angels are ministering spirits that are sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. So angels do the works of God. I have many other verses in my angels video teaching on YouTube, but they do the works of God. So I want you to realize that that's what all these angels you're going to see flying around heaven later. The angels you're going to see on the earth. We're going to also talk about fallen angels later, but understand that these are all out to fulfill the purposes of God and understand that God is going to judge the earth through these angels, through the trumpets, but not without a purpose. God is not ignoring what's happening in society. God is not ignoring what's going on with abortion. God is not ignoring what's happening in politics. All the corruption, all the abuse, all the taking advantage of right now in our earth, God is not ignoring. So society cannot expect God to ignore their wickedness for so long. The persecution, remember, that's going to be happening on the earth, the death of the saints on the earth. Society cannot expect God to ignore and be unoffended by the Antichrist, by the false prophet, and by the beast. God is going to pour out his wrath, and God is going to vindicate the tribulation martyrs. Remember, they said in the last chapter, how long are you going to be silent? Are you going to vindicate us? We've been martyred. We've been murdered for your name's sake. When will you vindicate us? And so we're going to see as the wrath of God is being poured out on an unrepented humanity, this is going to be partially the vindication of the tribulation saints. And this is going to be God judging the earth. Because remember, the justice of God is not going to be mocked. Paul said this, it's a righteous thing for God to repay those who harm his people. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. So it's a righteous thing. So the Lord will, the Lord will pay back his people. There's going to come a day of wrath for the earth, for those that are disobedient to God. Again, we've painted this Americanized, Westernized God that doesn't judge, God that's only love. But when you read the book of Revelation, which remember is the revelation of Jesus Christ, this book unveils the plan and nature in the end times of God and the nature of Jesus Christ. We're going to see a God who judges. We're going to see a God that pours out wrath. This is the God that we serve. So don't, don't think that God is just this nice, cuddly God. He does pour out wrath, but Remember, he does not pour out wrath without a purpose. And in the midst of the wrath of God being poured out, many, many, many people are going to be saved. Verse three, then another angel. So now here's the eighth angel having a gold censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So even though the eighth angel is not identified, some experts believe it's Jesus and or just another powerful angel. So we don't know if it's Jesus or not or just another powerful angel. We do know that he holds a special position of service before the golden altar of God. And this golden censer is similar to the one that's used in the Old Testament in the Jewish temple. So it had charcoal in it and it was burned under a layer of incense. And when the hot charcoal warmed the layer of incense, a fragrance was produced. So picture like it looks like a lamp and there's charcoal under, then there's a layer of incense. And when it got hot enough, the incense was released. So that's how it worked. Now the fragrance or aroma might be that of the spice of frankincense, which was one of the, gift, the gifts the wise men brought Jesus. Frankincense was also one of the spices burned in the Jewish temple. And this fragrance reminds God of his son who came and died for the sins of the world. So the eighth angel is gonna come with a golden censer, stand before the altar of God in heaven, and is gonna be given a massive amount of incense. And he's going to mix the incense with the prayers of the saints, the tribulation saints, and then he's gonna place the censer on the golden altar before the throne of God, and God is going to sense the aroma that comes from that. I know, again, some of this is like, how is that possible? This is spiritual, guys. This is in the. This is something where we have to stop trying to think it all logically and understand that John is actually having an out-of-body experience seeing a literal event, not just, oh, this is symbolic. No, this is a literal event John is seeing happen in heaven in verse four. 
and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. So Revelation 8.3 told us the eighth angel will be given the prayers of the saints. Now we may never know what those prayers will be, but Revelation 6.10 identifies one of them as the prayer of the tribulation saints. Here's one of the prayers we know will be in there, and this is the prayer. And this is in Revelation 6.10. How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So one of the prayers that's going to be in the incense, in the censer, is going to be, Lord, when are you going to avenge our blood? When are you going to judge the inhabitants of the earth that have killed your people, that have martyred your believers? So judgment is not God's first choice. Patience is, but God's patience is going to wear thin and God's judgment cannot be held back any longer. So now God's judgment is going to fall and the angel is going to take the censer containing the hot incense and the prayers of the saints. Those are mixed together and he's going to wave it around, causing the smoke to drift towards the throne of God and the almighty God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to smell the incense, hear the prayers, and the Lord is going to prepare an answer to the prayers that have been praying. Oh Lord, here's the prayer. Well, one of the prayers we know biblically, there may be many other prayers, but one of them is, Oh Lord, how long are you until you avenge us, avenge our blood of those that are dwelling on the earth that have killed us? And then the Lord says, I'm getting ready to answer you because in verse five, it says that then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar. Okay, so now he's spreading the aroma. Now he takes the censer, fills it with fire from the altar of God and throws it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and a, ma a mighty earthquake. That's in verse five. So now he's going to throw the incense onto the earth and judgment's now breaking out on the earth. So when the incense and all the prayers of the saints have been consumed in the censer, now all the prayers have been consumed. God responds. The censer's empty. He's going to go back to the altar. He's going to fill it up with fire and he's going to throw the censer with the fire in it down to the earth. The prayers will go up to God and the answer comes down to the earth and God is now going to avenge the death of the tribulation saints with fiery trials on the earth and we're going to see those trials so i want you to visual envision, envision the scene the antichrist and the false prophet have risen to power they're leading the inhabitants of the earth to worship satan well at the same time god's people are going to be hunted down like animals persecuted and killed the martyred saints are going to arrive to heaven and they're going to say, Lord, avenge us as they're still being people martyred on earth. God's going to tell them you need to wait because there's still a number that haven't been martyred. But then after a brief time, God will hear their prayers. God will respond. Here's God's response. An angel is going to hurl a burning censer. Some say a meteor, but that's here nor there. He's going to um, throw a burning censer down to the earth. And this will be a clear statement to all of humanity that the wrath of God is being poured out on the earth. Following this will be thunder, lightning, and an earthquake. And the earnest prayers of God's hurting people will finally reach him. And God's response, man, I feel the Holy Ghost strong tonight, is going to be, sh it's not only going to shake the earth, but the entire earth, we're not just talking America, is going to feel the shakings of God. And I'm, I'm just wondering, because it's about to get much worse, when are people going to realize, don't mess with God, that God is not something to mess with, that they've, they've angered the Lord God Almighty, and now it's too late to apologize because God's wrath is going to be poured out in an unmeasurable amount upon the inhabitants of the earth. Because verse six says, when the seven angels who had the seven trumpets, then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So once the censor hit the earth, the archangels are all going to pick up and prepare the trumpets. Once the prayers of the saints are heard, the whole world is now right for the judgment of God and God's wrath is going to be unleashed in the next set of judgments. And these are what we call the trumpet judgments. This is going to be the unleashing of the wrath of God. We've already broken the seals. Seventh seal released the seven angels. The eighth angel throws the censor down to the earth. Now the seven angels, I hope I'm explaining this good, are going to begin to blow their trumpets. Then the first angel in verse seven, the first angel and first angel sounded. So the first trumpet blows, hail and fire fall, followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And the third of the trees were burned up and the green grass was burned up. So but some Bible experts say this is not a literal fulfillment of the verse. However, I don't have any difficulty, listen to me tonight, chat, believing that God would do this. Some say it's not literal, God would never do this. I, don't, I believe it is because remember the seventh plague of Egypt was rain, 
hail mixed with fire that killed cattle, herbs, and trees. And it was a plague directed at Egypt's false god, Isis. So God has already done this before. God also rained, remember, hail, fire, and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. So there's no reason to believe that God is not gonna do it again. And the result of the hail, the fire, and the blood that's gonna rain from heaven is going to be one third of the earth, one third of the trees burned, and all the green grass burned, and this is going to cause an indescribable uh, destruction. It's also going to bring many people to have a lack of food, a lack of lumber. You're not going to be able to build houses. You're not going to be able to build things along with a lot of the grain is going to burn up in the fires. Because how many know if all the green grass burns up, then not only is a lot of the green grass going to be burn up, but also remember that this is going to remove a lot of the food supply. So the entire nature's balance is going to be upset. The entire food chain is going to be upset by this event. And the loss of life is going to be unimaginable. And these fires, this is not just going to be like the trees burn. This is going to be massive global fires where one, three, one third of all the trees, the trillions upon trillions of trees are going to burn up in this first trumpet. Now imagine how the world's going to look with the trees scorched and all the green grass gone. It's already going to look like an apocalyptic movie, but things are going to get worse in verse verses eight through nine. And then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And the th a third of the sea, think about this chat, a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. So the first trumpet signals judgment upon the earth. The next trumpet signals judgment upon the sea. And it reminds us of the first plague in Egypt in the days of Moses, which remember God turned water into blood. And it was directly at the going against the false god Hyka that killed the fish and frogs and made the water unfit for consumption. So this is another judgment we saw in the days of Moses, knowing or making us realize that God can and God will do it again on a mass scale. So I want you, but here's what I want you to pay attention to close attention to the wording in the verse. It doesn't say a burning mountains thrown into the sea. Here's what John says. It's something like a burning mountain that's thrown into the sea. So some people believe this could be a nuclear missile or this could be a meteorite that's thrown from heaven, a burning meteorite. And whatever it is, doesn't matter because one third of the ocean is going to turn to blood, causing the entire ocean to look like blood. And then one third of all the sea life will be killed. And one third of all the ships are going to be immediately destroyed once this meteor-like substance hits the water. Those who depend on the ocean for jobs, for food, for defense, for cargo. I don't know if you know, but a lot of stuff is transported over the ocean. It's going to re havoc again on the economy and as a result of this mountain hitting the sea it's likely that everything close to the sea will probably be damaged by a great tidal wave imagine a meteor imagine the tidal wave of a massive meteor hitting the ocean and beginning to flood all these different parts of the world so this is absolute chaos things are only going to get worse as we progress through chapter 8 verses 10 through 11 then the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and the spring and of the springs of water the name of the star is wormwood and a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter now some believe that this is also a meteor or some type of meteorite others say again it could be a nuclear missile everyone kind of has a different thing but just know it's a blazing object with some type of poisonous substance in it. It's gonna to fall to the sky and the Bible calls it wormwood, which is a bitter herb from the Bible. And it will contaminate one third of the earth's fresh water supply, causing many people who drink the water, the tainted water to die. The Bible doesn't say um, it is, it, the Bible doesn't say how exactly they're gonna die, but we know that people are gonna die not only from drinking the water, but people are also going to die from thirst because number one, you're not gonna know what water's poison, but number two, there's going to be a lack of water because wormwood is going to come and hit the earth. So now one third of the fresh water is tainted. People are going to be unable to find drinking water. Extreme thirst is going to set in. Adults can survive around three days without waters while sick people and infants have fewer days. And the days of Jeremiah, God said this in Jeremiah 23, 15, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall for from the prophets of Jerusalem, profaneness has gone out into the land. So the prophets of Jerusalem should have been fighting evil and giving people the pure water of the word, but instead they were catering to the morally corrupt society 
hence giving people poisoned doctrine or poisoned water. And so God judged them. So what the Lord is showing us by naming this wormwood is in the same way the false prophets poisoned my church. So I now God in my judgment is going to poison humanity with this meteorite substance called wormwood that's going to come to the earth and is going to poison the people. Okay. And the prophets of Jerusalem, they wouldn't come confront evil and so God judge them verse 12 that was the third angel is going to poison the waters the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck a third and a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened and third of the day did not shine and likewise the night so we have not only does the sun the moon and the stars are now going to get one third darker but now one third of the day doesn't shine so we're going to lose a one third day of sunlight so the fourth judgment is going to affect the heavenly bodies the sun the moon the stars um, and one of the reasons why scholars believe this is happening is because pagans worship these things astrologers worship these things fortune tellers worship these things witches rely on them to predict the future so think of it as the light of the sun the moon the stars being diminished by one third and we know that there's going to be fires breaking out that the smoke is going to darken the earth but how much darker is the earth going to be now that literally think about this the sun the moon and the stars one third darker and we're going to lose one third of the day so things are not only on fire the water is now poison it's it's getting infinitely worse and worse and worse as the trumpets go out winter storms are breaking out people are freezing to death because now the sun's one third less heat and one third less bright it's going to be massive calamity all throughout the earth chapter 8 thir verses 13 and, and guys i know i know it's overwhelming for you praise the lord if you're a believer right now you won't be there and this is why we need to preach to friends and family so that they don't have to go through the tribulation this is the worst time the bible says there will be no worst time is this in human history this is all 100 percent fact it's in the bible it's going to happen we need to preach to our friends and family so they don't have to live through this now if you're a believer praise the lord i have the, i know the end of the book we win and you won't have to live through this praise the lord but again this is a catastrophic time a devastating time verses 13 uh 8 chapter 8 verse 13 and i look and i heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice whoa 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound so now an angel's declaring three more angels are about to blow their trumpets and now three woes are coming and this angel's flying through the through heaven saying woe to the inhabitants of the earth it's about to get much worse and so these correspond with the last three trumpets some even call them the trumpet woes and it's hard to imagine that things could get worse than what we've already mentioned tonight but things are about to get a whole lot worse 